we're going to do pencil blending, shading. We're going to learn how to shade a sphere. In my class, what you're going to have to do should be exactly as I'm about to show you right now. You're going to need a piece of drawing paper that is nine inches long, six inches wide. You're also going to need a ruler, a pencil, a pair of scissors, some stick glue, your reference photos, and a piece of scrap paper. I'm using this magazine page right here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the paper off. I've got a clear ruler here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put the zero on the top edge of the paper. Anywhere over here on this side of the paper. It doesn't have to be right on the edge. Anywhere over here. And I'm going to put a mark on the half inch. This is going to be my name, date, and block up here. I'm going to uh, come down a little bit and put a mark on the one inch. And then I'm going to put another mark on the one and a half inch. And then I'm going to put a mark on the three and a half inch. And then I'm going to come all the way down here to the bottom. And even though this paper is a little bit bigger than nine inches, I'm going to go ahead and put my mark on the eight and a half. This is going to make the border down here. It's supposed to be a half inch, but it's going to be a little bit bigger because my paper is not cut 100% accurately. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to put a mark on the half inch, the one inch, the one and a half inch, the three and a half inches, and the eight and a half inches. Like I said before, this part right here is going to, this top part is going to be for your name, date, and block. And you cannot get credit for the project unless you have that at the top. The next line is going to be for my uh, reference photo value gradient. The next line is going to be where I'm going to do my own value gradient. The next space is going to be for the sphere reference photo. And this last line down here is going to be the border at the bottom of the paper. In order to make a line straight, you have to have two marks, just like I had here and here, here and here, here and here, and here and here. Make sure you, that you measure on both sides of the paper. So that's going to be the bottom border. This next part is going to be a little bit easier. I'm going to put the zero on the side of the paper over here, and I'm going to put a mark on the half inch, because I'm going to do a half inch border this way. And then I'm going to come over to this side, and five inches away from that half inch mark is five and a half. Put a mark there. Let me come up a little bit. And I'm going to put a mark at a half inch and another mark at five and a half. It's because you have to have two marks in order to get a line that's parallel with the edge of the paper. And it's parallel with what you want it to be parallel with, whatever that might be. You have to have two marks. So now I have a five inch square at the bottom. I'm going to erase that line right there a little, this line right here a little. This will make it kind of nice and neat. Always draw lightly so that you can erase when you need to. You can always add more pencil if you need it to be darker, but you can't take it away as easy. So there we go. Scrap piece of paper and my reference photo. I'm going to cut my reference photo out as accurately as I can so that it will fit on the paper correctly. All right, so. This is my two inch square and it's going to go right there. But I also have a value gradient. I'm going to cut right in the middle of this black outline that I've got. This way it will fit on my piece of paper and the spaces that I've marked out for it. I want it to go right there. And so I'm going to put some glue on the back of it. Remember, your paper has to be exactly the way I'm showing you right here, or I will count some of it wrong. If it is not accurate, then I will count it wrong. So again, my name, date, and block go at the top. My value gradient goes right there. My reference photo is going to go right here. Now if you'll notice, I have a line right here that is blank. I'm going to draw a line from here to here and a line from here to here. 
This is going to be my value gradient. This pencil will probably not get as black as this, but I want to get this as black as I can get it right here on this end. As dark as I can get a pencil to be, that's how dark I want this to be. And I don't want to go outside the line if I can help it. I want to practice control right off the bat. Now, as I go this direction, I'm going to start um, fading it out. I think it's easier to stay inside the line going with the line that I'm trying to stay inside of. But it's also hard to keep it from looking too scribbly this way. So you've got to practice perfect control. Uh, in one sense, it should be the same for everybody, but some people are going to find a slightly different method easier. Notice how I'm letting up the pressure and I'm getting a little bit lighter here. I don't want any lines to indicate where one value ends and another one begins. I just want it to be a smooth transition from one value to another, getting lighter as it goes. I also kind of want to match this. And even though I cannot match this black up here, I can start to match the gray a little bit in terms of value. So I'm going to stretch this out a little bit further. This pencil is just considerably lighter, a whole lot lighter than the value gradient. All right, now I'm going to slip into like super soft mode, super light touch as I get down here towards the other end, which is almost white. I'm going to come back up here and see if I can't make it a little bit darker. I'm going to slowly work it down. And like I said, I don't want any lines. I want it to be a slow transition, whatever I have to do. And one of the ways that you can do this is make sure that you uh, overlap your marks. It's going to look really scribbly if you don't overlap the marks and overlap them with the same amount of pressure. I want to put my sphere right here and I want it to match that sphere as much as possible. I'm going to use a compass to get the sphere that I want. This one is in the middle. I'm going to find the center of this by drawing a light line this way. And I'm going to draw a line from this side very lightly. The middle of it is right here. If I put the middle of my compass right there, I'm going to draw a light line there. What we want to do is make sure that we match the value. Uh, I'm going to take my ruler and right across the middle, I'm going to draw a line here and here. And I want my highlight to be right there. See that? See where the highlight is? Here's the circle. That highlight is in the top left corner. So I'm going to put my highlight in that top left corner. To do that, I need to start building up values. Remember, overlap your pencil shape, uh, pencil marks, your scribbles, and it won't look uh, scribbly. Oh yeah, I don't want to forget my shadow down here. It's basically an oval. It sticks out this way a little bit, almost touches the side over there. It might help if you turn your paper around so that you can get the flow of your hand going the right direction. Remember, you want to practice good craftsmanship, stay inside the line as much as possible. Notice I'm going with the circle. I don't want to go straight across if I can help it. Um, lines that follow the circle will look uh, better, kind of add to its roundness. Now down here, I'm trying to get it as dark as I can get it. I haven't really applied the most amount of pressure yet, but I'm about to. I'm trying to get it as dark as I can down here because this is really dark down here. <clears throat> Take your time on this, build it up slowly. You can always make it darker if you need to, but it's hard to erase it. Also, you're trying to do this with the pencil and not with smudging, no finger smudging, no finger smudging at all. That will introduce oils into your paper and into your graphite. It essentially creates an oil-based paint out of the graphite, and you don't want that. It'll stain the paper, and you definitely won't be able to erase it. Also, uh, it wouldn't hurt to have something to like, cover your paper with so that your hand doesn't leave oils on it. Should have been doing that all along. Hopefully, I won't run into any trouble with, uh, because of that. 
uh, even though this is a practice exercise, you want to practice it correctly. Practice good form on this, and you will be able to do the final project correctly. Put as much effort into this as you can into getting it right, and you'll build good habits for your future assignments. Now for sort of the hardest part. It is hard to not put too much pressure down, all right? So this requires a lot of steadying of the hand. And it sort of creates a, a circle around the highlight. Just trying to make a nice, gentle circle. Hit these spots where I missed so it didn't look scribbly. Lighten up the pressure as I get towards that middle part. Super hard to do. Super hard. The darker you can make this bottom part, the more it will look like it's going under and round and spherical. All right, down here we also have a shadow. Notice the shadow is a little bit lighter here, a little bit lighter there, darker right here. And Technically the same shade as the sphere is. So we're going to color this in, get it as dark as we can get it. I will probably give you, my class, some darker pencils to use because this pencil is just not very dark. Uh, the background, that background really makes the sphere pop out. So I'm going to go around the back. You take your ruler, put it right there, and that will help you keep it off of the bottom section. On this side of the sphere, sometimes uh, the sphere itself disappears into the darkness of the background. That's okay. Uh, in the art world, we call that lost and found edges. Uh, just because you lost an edge over here due to it being so dark doesn't mean you can't tell what an object is. Let's flip it around to this other side. Put this ruler on this other side so that I can kind of control my pencil and where it goes. All right, there's the top. It's starting to look like a real work of art now. And the bottom has got some value here, uh, so that this is not just flat white. There's really very little in real life that's going to be white, uh, except for direct light and highlights. And this is my highlight. I want it to be white. So I'm going to shade my table in a little bit. And I don't want to lose it in the background there, but I want to shade it in a little. As long as I make it lighter than the sphere itself, I don't have to worry about getting out of lines. As long as I don't get cra too crazy, because the sphere is going to cover up the other end of my line a little bit you don't want it darker than your shadow. You want your shadow to be darker than the table. I just don't want my table. And that, my friends, is the assignment. I uh, hope you uh, can make the most of yours. I hope you learn how to shade and build good shading habits. So uh, now it's your turn. Go do this assignment. I'm going to erase just a little bit there and that.